Working Capital Management, Fin 3702. Um, it's actually quite good that you're doing both in the same semester. I think that's a really good way of doing it because they overlap quite a bit. Um, you asked me a question in 3701, what is Working Capital? Well, this whole module is about Working Capital. Okay. Okay. Again, just a bit of introduction, obviously a bit about background about the business, the website, and obviously the weekly support classes with contact information. Okay, so if you need assistance, just send me a message or an email and I'll get back to you. All right, so how does working capital management differ from the FIN 3701? Well, 3701. well the main difference is it's short term. So everything that we're looking at here, is short term so current assets current liabilities we're not looking at long-term capital budgeting decisions that's what we cover in 3701 that's the main difference between the two modules another thing is you're only going to be using a few of the chapters in the textbook the scope mm -hmm. is a lot more condensed it's not as broad um, in terms of focus as the other modules and it covers a lot less in terms of theory the textbook is the same as the other module, so one or um, first edition or second edition would be perfect. The calculators will be used here as well, and the assignments will do at a later time. Okay, if you can, always a good okay. idea to pre-read and make notes where you can. And if you have any questions, feel free to stop and ask me during the, the actual class. Okay, so the scope. Here's the outline for this particular module. Um, you'll see the textbook. Chapters are actually broken up into pages. Mm -hmm. Chapter 1, well, not chapter 1 actually, chapter 3, chapter 14, and chapter 15. Those are the only chapters that you're going to be looking at from a working capital point of view. It's covering all the chapters that you haven't looked at in the other modules. So remember, FIN 2601 covered the first few, then 3701 will obviously look at the rest. And the ones that we skip in those two modules are covered in this one. So by the time you've completed this semester, you would have literally gone through that entire textbook that you bought. Okay. Okay, so use the same textbook. And there are some points that carry through from 3701. Okay, so some things that you, we do cover there get repeated here as well. Um, but I'll make a reference to it when we discuss it. Okay. So to start off, topic one, cash flow and financial planning. So two questions for you to consider. Let's start with the first one. What is cash flow? It's the money you have available to pay. Is it the money you have available? Yes, I don't know, on hand. Cash flow is looking at this. If it's money on hand, then it's a resource that you control. Yes. So if it's cash flow, what is it? Come, think about your financial statements, cash flow statement. FAC 1601, Tam Tammy. Your opera money that you have available for your operations. Okay, that's more the financial planning. So I think let's put those points that you've mentioned, money available, okay, money for operations, that's more the planning. The cash flow is inflow versus outflow. Okay, so the cash flow is the actual um, usage. Okay, what are we actually doing with the cash that we actually have? How is it flowing from um, customer to business, from business to supplier? Okay. okay. So with the cash flow, can cash flow be negative? Um, no. Cash flow can be negative. And if cash flow is negative, what happens to the business? In debt. It'll go insolvent. Okay, so businesses go out of business not because they're unprofitable. They go out of business because they don't manage their 
cash flow. Okay, we've okay. mentioned this before in, in 2601. Can an unprofitable company continue to operate? Yes. Yes. Do you remember the example we used in 2601? No. Okay, we spoke about Twitter. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I showed you guys the financial statements of Twitter and Facebook last semester. Remember that? Yes. Okay. And Twitter was a very unprofitable company. Still is unprofitable even today. But does Twitter mm -hmm. still exist? Yes. Yes, it does. Hey, um, uh, while, while we're on the topic of Twitter, um, I've actually um, started posting uh, tweets on the Creativa Solutions um, Twitter handle. Um, so if you do have Twitter, um, please uh, follow the Creativo Solutions page. Um, that'll be great to get some more follows on that um, social media site. Okay. Okay. I don't have Twitter. Oh, okay, you don't. All right, I don't well, know that's how fine. to set it up or how it even works. Hey? Do you have a Facebook page? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got all the social media, um, but I, I use social media mainly for business, yeah. So then, can you share it on Facebook? Um, you can. So, okay, so I think I'll, I'll send it to you and then you can have a look and then maybe share it on Facebook. That's a good idea. Yeah. It's just with Facebook, you need to invite and friends. Um, so you actually need, and you need people to like the page. So I find it takes a lot more time to build a following. Um, with Twitter, it suits me in terms of what I want to do with the business because I'm, I'm, I'm creating content and I'm pushing content out to the world. So with Twitter, um, anyone who's anyone who's anywhere um, can actually watch um, the, the content, read the tweets, rather than having to be my friend in terms of Facebook or having to have liked the page um, before watching or viewing the content, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see. Okay, so that's the point there in terms of Twitter and Facebook. So do we both do we both agree that Twitter is an unprofitable company? Yes. But do they still exist today? Yes. Yes, they do. Right, Facebook, profitable, unprofitable. Think profitable. Yes, Facebook's doing really well. Okay, earlier on you spoke about Instagram. Okay, Instagram is actually part of Facebook. Okay, the um, huh? they they bought Facebook for a billion dollars a few years back, and both companies exist today and will probably continue to exist going forward. And if I'm mm -hmm. looking at cash flow, are mm -hmm. both companies managing their cash flow? Yes. Yes. See, that's the point I'm trying to make is it doesn't matter if you're profitable or unprofitable. That's not the focus. The accountants care about the profit. But if you're looking at the financial management of the business, the organization, so long as your cash flow is positive, that, that business will continue to operate forever. Okay. Okay. Another social media um, platform that's also becoming very popular is Snapchat. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. Yes, I have that. Okay, yeah. That's also growing in terms of pop popularity. So um, a lot of different platforms are being used um, to generate value for consumers because people are trying to consume more and more content. Mm. Okay, so if you're familiar with Snapchat, obviously you know what capability you have there in terms of the short videos that you can post and the storylines that you can create. So if I'm looking at cash flow, cash flow is exactly that. It's a story. It tells a story about where the company is actually spending its funds and why do we need to know where the company is spending its funds? For future planning? For planning purposes, that's correct, but also to check if we can maybe do things better. Okay, so I might be spending too much funds as part of operations and maybe we need to spend more in investing okay because remember from your accounting knowledge you know there are three sections right so a cash flow statement operating financing and investing mm -hmm. okay so those three are the three areas that you can spend money on you either invest money you either pay for operations or okay you use it for financing Okay. All right, so when we look at short-term financial planning, what are we going to be dealing with? What is this actual planning? 
how are we going to be using the funds? Okay, just elaborate a bit more. Um, are we going to spend it on operating, financing, or investment? Okay, okay, that's good. So you've you've basically repeated the um, different sections of the statement, which is fine. So if I'm looking at the planning, do you agree? There's going to be a level of strategy. Yes. Okay. What is strategy? Your plan. Yes. Okay. It's a plan of action, not just a plan. It's a plan that actually gets implemented. Okay. Okay. So um, businesses can have lots and lots of different plans. Those plans are useless if, if no one acts on those plans or, or implements those plans. So the financial planning is more than just, well, let's create a plan. It's let's do something with the plan that we've got. Okay, so okay. again, we've spoken about a goal, and we know the primary objective of a business is to do what? To maximize wealth and value. Exactly. Okay, so if that's the key, if I maximize value, I need to look at ways to allocate finance to certain areas that will help the business run or continue to operate. So the main let's say category or, or topic that we're going to be looking at is this, the cash flow, and we're going to be looking at this. And we're going to be looking at how do the two interact. Okay, because we need day-to-day -day funds to operate, but we also need funds for long-term projects. So now how do we mix long-term and short-term? How do we manage our short-term that will help the long-term? Or how does long-term help the short-term, depending on what sort of... Um, uh, view or strategy we have. Okay, we'll learn about two. There's an aggressive and a conservative strategy. Um, you said you haven't received anything yet for this module, right? No. Okay, so the only thing that you would have is the textbook. Yes. Okay, yeah, so chapter three is what I'm looking at here in terms of the first few uh, modules that we'll cover, and then those other chapters that we saw earlier will be um, expanding on them at a later stage. Okay, so if you want to, in the meantime, while you wait for your material, um, just go through chapter three then in the actual um, text, okay. the, the principles of financial managerial finance. Okay. Okay. All right. So on this diagram, you've got the scope. In this particular module, each and every one of these headings are a separate study unit. So the one that we're looking at today is the first one, this one here, study unit one. Study unit one is analyzing the firm's cash flow. Okay, then we look at process later, then we look at this, then we look at cash conversion, then we look at inventory, then we look at receivables, then we look at liabilities, and then we end with lending. Okay, so those are all the different categories that you'll be covering in FIN3702. Okay, so that gives you a really good idea in terms of where everything fits in. Remember, working capital is long term or short term? Short term. Correct. So if it's short term, what type of um, projects are we going to be considering? Short term, current. Okay, so when you say short term or current, give me an example. Things that I can do immediately. Like? For a business? Um, buy new equipment. Okay, when you say buy new equipment, equipment is a is um, capital expenditure, hey? Okay. That's long term. Um, Hello? I don't know. Okay, so if we're looking at um, creditors, is creditors long term or short term? Sorry, can I just quickly pause here? Okay, so what's the difference between you said purchasing equipment? Yes. Is that long term or short term? Well, short term. No, right. equipment is long term. That's the capital. Budgeting decision. That's replacement and expansion. That's not working capital. Uh, okay. Okay, so working capital is short term. Yes. 
So what short-term financial management decisions do I need to make? I don't know. Okay, if I'm buying stock, is that long-term or short-term? Short-term. Okay, if I'm paying the creditor, is that long-term or short-term? Short-term. Okay, if I'm, if I'm um, giving credit to customers in terms of debtors, long-term or short-term? Um, short-term. Short-term. Okay, so working capital is basically anything day-to-day. Think about general operations. What are we doing on a day-to-day basis where cash is going to be needed to operate? Okay. So study unit one is looking at the analysis, okay? And then analyzing the firm's cash flow. We're going to be looking at depreciation. We, we spoke quite a bit about depreciation in the first uh, module, uh, 3701. We'll be expanding on one or two concepts here as well. We'll be looking at the cash flow statement again. What information can we get from the statements? Remember, we're not going to be looking at creating the statements. That's not our job. Our job as the financial manager is to use the statement to make a decision. Leave the accounting to the accountants, okay? And we focus on the decision making. So we're going to be using the data or the information that they provide in terms of statements. We need to understand and interpret what's in the actual statement before we can make a decision on what we need to do from a financial management point of view. Okay, financial management involves allocating a certain amount of budget okay, to certain areas, making sure that the, the company can operate, okay, having enough cash flow, because companies go bankrupt because they don't manage cash flow. Right, and there's the key there, the cash flow statement differs from income statement. Why? <coughs> What's the difference? I'm sorry. Um, well, the income doesn't necessarily mean that it's cash that's available. Okay, yes. The one is an accrual and the other is cash. Okay, yes. So how do accountants prepare statements? On which basis? Accrual. Exactly. Okay, so we need to now view that as being a obstacle that we need to overcome from a decision-making point of view. Because we can't make decisions based on what the statements say, because what the statements actually say may or may not be the truth from a cash flow point of view. So the statement that's, the, that's better for financial management is the cash flow statement, because that gives you more detail around the actual operations of the business. Okay. All right, so textbook three talks about the purpose, okay, the role, the responsibility that the financial manager has. Managers need to manage day-to-day -day finances. So give me an example of a day-to-day -day task that a financial manager would have to do. One example. Um, well, paying the creditors. Okay, something as simple as paying bills, good. And then planning, is that now or in the future? Now and future. Okay, why do you say now and future? Is planning now or is planning future? Well, you plan now for the future. Okay, so you're looking at the current situation, okay? And based on the current situation, we then make decisions based on what we're going to do in the future. <coughs> okay. Okay, so that's good because your view is, well, we need a basis to work from before making a decision okay, or before making an, um, a plan or, or plan of action All right so yes yeah, so generally we're going to be focusing more on future in terms of what is going to happen and what will happen rather than what mm. is happening now because what's happening now is that accounting that the accountants will be doing okay because for them they're reporting on the now okay what's actually happening currently All right decision making we know financial managers are responsible for decision making and then obviously creating budgets a budget represents what? The limited resources available. Okay, the allocation, good, of the limited resources. So how much income is going to be derived, okay, and how much are we going to be spending? Okay. Again, we, we've spoken a lot about the goal for the firm. You've seen this in other modules as well. What is the ultimate goal? Maximize value. Correct. Okay, a few terms that we need to be familiar with. Depreciation, 
is a systematic charge okay, of a portion of the asset's cost for the fixed asset. So if you think about it in this sense, I've got an asset, okay, uh, let's say it's a machine. This machine is manufacturing products. Okay. Okay. So every product that comes out of the machine is what? Is value. It's valuable. Okay, so this machine is valuable because it manufactures products. Okay, so those products that are coming off the machine are valuable because we can sell them. But does that machine last forever? No. No. So this machine will have a useful life, maybe 5, maybe 10, maybe 20 years, depending on how long the machine will be operating for. So okay. when looking at analyzing the firm's cash flow, what cash flow would be applicable to the machine? Um, Will there be inflows and outflows for the machine? Yes. So what? What outflows and inflows? Well, the outflows is um, like repairs and stuff like that, or the dep. Okay, not depreciation, but yeah. Okay, you're right about the repairs and the maintenance. Are we going to take repairs and maintenance into yeah. consideration? Definitely. And the reason for that is repairs and maintenance is a relevant cost. Okay, so it doesn't matter which module we're looking at. We're always looking at the decision. What is the decision? Well, the decision is to keep the machine running because we need products to sell. So if the machine is going to be operating, it needs to be maintained. It needs to be repaired. Thanks. So you're right by yeah. indicating um, repairs and maintenance as a potential outflow that will arise by using the machine. You, you said depreciation, then you changed your answer. Why is depreciation important from a firm analysis? Well, it does lose value, but it's not a physical outflow of cash. But how do you get a benefit? Well, it's still producing. How do you get a benefit? How is depreciation a benefit? No, it's not. It is a benefit. How? There's a wear and tear allowance. Um. Okay. So SARS, South African Revenue Services, okay, the taxman will allow you to claim a wear and tear allowance on those items that you're using. Okay, because think about it. If I buy a machine, is that machine an asset? Yes. Yes. Is that machine an expense? Yes. No, it isn't. Okay, the machine itself isn't an expense. The machine is an asset. So now, what incentive do I have for using that machine? Other than the products that I get from the production line. Income. Well, that's from the products that I produce from the production line. Other than that? I don't know. Depreciation. Okay. You can claim depreciation from SARS. Okay. So what does that do to your tax? It reduces it. So there's a tax saving. Right. So every time you buy a new asset as a business, you will be able to claim a wear and tear allowance on that particular asset. And that's why companies buy assets because they have an incentive to buy new assets. That's something else that we could have maybe discussed in terms of a motive. Okay, but there were other motives. We didn't look at this one specifically. Okay, but a tax saving is a reason why companies would want to purchase new assets. Because think about this. You, you bought a new tablet, right? Yes. You're not running a business, so you won't be able to claim that tablet in terms of depreciation. Okay, but let's say you were running a business. Could you claim that cost that you incurred for spending money on buying a tablet against the expenses of your business? Yes. Yes, you would if you were running a business. Okay, so businesses have an incentive to claim depreciation in the form of a wear and tear allowance. Okay, but are you, like, obliged to spend it on new equipment or machinery? No, no one's obliged to do any, anything. So SARS isn't going to say, well, you must buy the tablet or you must buy the machine. 
All right, that's a decision that the business is going to make. So if the business isn't in a position where it can buy new equipment or new machinery, it's not going to do so. A, a company will only buy new equipment, new machinery, if it can afford to upgrade or improve its current, um, let's say, resources. All right, but SARS gives you an incentive to do so. So let's say you had a machine that was like 10 years old, but the machine is still working 100% correct. Okay, it, it isn't breaking down, it's still operating, there's nothing wrong with the machine. Is there an incentive to buy a new one? Well, the answer is no, because the current machine is working. But if no one is buying new equipment and new machinery, well, then no one's going to buy new equipment and new machinery. And that's why SARS allows an allowance in the form of a wear and tear allowance that you can claim. So big businesses would then purchase new equipment because when they do so, they'll be able to claim a depreciation allowance in the form of a wear and tear against this asset that they're purchasing. Okay. Okay. So do assets have the same depreciation? No. No, they don't. Okay. There are rules around how you can depreciate certain assets. So let's see if you can calculate depreciation. This is something that you do need to know. It'll help you not only in this module, but also in the other module, the 3701. The first bit I've got here is the depreciable value. What is it? Let's first define it. What is depreciable value? Come Tammy, you've done accounts. What is depreciable value? Well, the cost. What cost? The total cost. Okay, the cost. Like the installation and. Well, the actual product and the installation. Okay, so why do we include those? Can I use the asset if I haven't installed it? No. No. Okay, so depreciable value is the actual asset that is in a useful state. I can't use something if it hasn't been installed. I can't use something if it hasn't been set up. Okay, so depreciable value is what is the actual value of that asset when it's in a useful state that I can make use of it in terms of the actual output, okay, creating products or whatever the case might be. Okay. Okay, so simple example. What is the depreciable value of this machine? Um, 520. Correct. Why did you include the 20,000? In order to make it useful exactly. to install. You can't use a machine that's not installed. Depreciation will start once it's in its useful state. Okay. Okay, what about these two questions? How long can we depreciation ask for? Um, I don't know. Think about it. How long can we depreciate the asset for? Until we get rid of it, to, until it breaks. Okay, so you can depreciate the asset for your chosen time frame. So if you believe the asset will be used for 5, 10, 15 years, then that's what you can use. Right. To be more specific, SARS gives you the rules on the time frame that you have in terms of the depreciation. Okay, so it could be three years for, um, so for electronics uh, like PCs, laptops, and, and, and mobile phones, that, that's generally three years. Okay, obviously every year they have the budget speech, and at the budget speech, they then revise the different tax rules and laws of the country. Okay, remember it's February now, 1st of Feb. Toward the end of Feb, you'll hear a lot about the budget. Okay, so if you do have some time, maybe watch the budget as well because that definitely affects financial decision making. Um, and that's also something that you should be looking at from an economics point of view. Okay, I'm sure in economics you probably cover the budget in a lot of detail. But anyway, if we're just focusing on the depreciable life, we're looking at the rules that are set by SARS. So SARS gives you guidelines in terms of how you're going to or how long you're going to be 
depreciating an asset for? Okay. Okay, every asset is different and the time period for depreciation will differ. Where do we get this information? We just spoke about it. SARS. Okay, so how long it will depend? It depends on the SARS rules. Okay. Okay, you should be familiar with these two types of methods. Straight line and diminishing balance. What do we use for the straight line method? Um, it's just that equal proportions. But same equal, each. But what way. do we use as the basis of the calculation? Cost. Correct. And for uh, diminishing balance? Cost minus... Um... No. Cost minus what? Um, 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 um. Cost minus depreciation. Accumulates depreciation. And what, is, what does cost minus accumulates depreciation give you? Carrying value. Good. Okay, so can you work out depreciation here? Wait, I'm all right. I'm on the wrong slot. Okay. Cause no. What's wrong? I don't know how to calculate it. An asset is worth a hundred thousand. It must be depreciated over, over five years straight line. Yes, but I don't know the percentage. How do I get the percentage? I can't remember. Well, if I've got five years, what's the total value of the asset? Hundred thousand. So how much will I have to depreciate every year? Uh, 20. Yes, 20% 20 or 20,000. So 100,000 divided by 5 years is 20,000 per annum. Okay, 5 years, yes. if you think about the asset, the asset has a value of 100%. 100% divided by 5 is the same as 20% per annum. Mm -hmm. So what's the yearly depreciation? 20,000. 20,000 20, a year. What about this okay. one? That's the 400,000 divided by 8. Which is? Five. Or 50. Which one? Five or 50? 50. Okay, so 50,000 per annum. annum. Depreciation. Annual depreciation. Okay. If I wanted mm -hmm. the percentage, I could just take 100 divided by 8. 100 divided by 8 is 12,5, so that's 12,5 percent. So okay, then so I'd say 12,5 percent times 400,000. 12.5 percent times 400,000 will give you the same answer. Okay. Right, so it doesn't matter what you get, years or percentages, it makes no difference. Okay. Okay. Question. How much accumulated depreciation will I have after four years? Um, you're going to have to work it out individually. So, how much is it? Is the depreciation changing? Yes. No. It's straight line. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, well, then it will be 4 HS, so you're going to take the 50,000 times 8. No, after 4 years, not after 8 years. Where do you see 4 years? No, I'm asking the question. I'm oh, asking the question, so what is the accumulated depreciation after 4 years? Oh, uh, so it will be 200,000. Correct. And that represents the accumulated depreciation. Okay. Okay. Right, let's see if you can work this one out. Um. Let me just get my calculator. 300,000 times 20% is 60,000 per annum. annum. All right, so again, if I asked you how much depreciation, accumulated depreciation, will I have after year two, what would the answer be? 120. Correct. Okay, let's try this one. Diminishing balance, a bit more challenging. We need the yearly depreciation Schedule. So, what is the schedule going to look like? Some revision from your accounts. What columns do I need? I can't remember that. Okay, what do we always start with? Cost. Good. Then what else? Minus or plus the installation stuff. No, we're not looking at FIN 3701. So cost minus depreciation. Cost minus accumulated depreciation. That's better. Okay. Okay, so the columns that we need, cost definitely, I agree. Depreciation, I need. What else? Um, accumulated depreciation. What else? The number of years. What else? Um, selling value. No, we're not selling it, we're using it. I don't know. What's the difference between these two? Which two? What it was worth and what it is worth today. So what do we call that? I don't know. Cost minus accumulated depreciation gives me what? Oh, the carrying value. Okay. All right, and those are the columns you're going to need to draw up the depreciation schedule for the yearly amounts. So how much is the asset worth? 100,000. 25% per annum, right? Yes. Right, so now can you complete the table? If it's 25%, it's four years. So there's the table. I want you to find these figures for each year. Okay, so we're going to say the cost times 25% and then get your answer. And what's that answer for? The accumulated depreciation. No. Why? It's for the depreciation. Okay, yes, but then in that next column, you're going to write that same value for the first year. Fine, agreed. And the carrying value. No. no the carrying value must be the 100,000 minus the accumulated depreciation. Yes. Okay. okay. 
All right, you've got three more lines to do. Okay, then we're going to take the 75,000 times 25%. Is the cost going to change? No. Okay, keep going. Okay, so 75 times 25%. Is what? I don't know. You've got your calculator with you. Let me... I must still get used to this again. Times 0 0.25. 18750. And then? Then I must minus that from the 100,000. No, the 75. No, come on, I want the next column. What's in here? Oh, so it must be the 25 plus the 18750. Yes, and then? And then the carrying value will be the 100,000 minus the 43750. All right, keep going. Oh, wait. Is that what you did? Yes. 100,000 minus, okay, okay, I see there. Okay, then you're going to do the same. So it's going to be 56250. 56250 times 0 0.25 equals 14062.5. Okay, okay, then we're going to add that to the 43750. And what do you get? Uh, I haven't started working it out yet. 14062.5. Plus four three seven five zero. It's four seven eight one two point five zero. And then I'm gonna say one four oh six two point five minus five seven eight one two point five. No carrying value. What is carrying value here? Third line. Oh, it's the cost of the 100,000 minus the 57812. Yes. Okay, one more. It's 57812. Okay, so now we're going to take that for one. Oh, four two one eight seven point five times twenty five percent equals one oh five four six point eight seven five oh. And then then I'm gonna add that to the five seven eight one two five seven eight one two point five six eight three five nine okay and then I'm gonna add it to the carrying value. Add it. Subtract it. From what? From the carrying value. No. How do you get carrying value? The cost. Cost minus the accumulated depreciation. So it's 100,000 minus 683. Good. Okay, that's the first table. Okay, so I've helped you with that table. I think there's another example just after that one for you to try. Let's have a look. Okay, no. All right, so that's the only example there. We will see more in, in other um, questions. Will in you terms of the... Pardon? Will you email this table to me, please? Yes, I can. Because I didn't write it down now. You didn't write it down? 
No. Okay, there, there is space on the slide as well if you want to use that. Okay, but I will send it to you if you need it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, so happy with those two methods? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Here's a note about cash flow. We spoke about it earlier in the introduction. Operating, financing, and investing. Those are the three sections for a cash flow statement. If I'm looking at operating, I'm looking at sale and I'm looking at production. Those are the two areas that affect operations. Right, so what sort of activities would you see under sale and production? Well, buying and selling. Okay, so marketing, right? Marketing would be part of that process, yes? Okay. Okay, production. What could be part of production? Would maintenance fall here? Yes. Yes, it would. Okay, so operating activities, most of your expenses in terms of cash flow would fall under operating. Is that right? Okay. Okay, investing okay. is looking at long term. Okay, so purchasing or sale of assets. We're looking at long term assets. It could be financial assets, it could be normal. Um, non-current physical assets perhaps okay but we're looking at the actual purchasing of those particular items okay investing in those items then we've got okay. financing which is looking at debt and equity what do I need to pay on debt interest and what do I pay on equity dividends good okay those are the two that you would have for financing great Right, and all of that is important from a cash flow point of view because they will affect cash flow. Okay. Right, so now we need to look at this whole idea of accounting versus cash flow. We actually saw it a bit earlier when we spoke a bit about the accrual principle versus the cash principle. Let's consider an example. Okay, so if you have your textbook with you, on page 96, there's an example there looking at the classification of cash flow and why it's important. They look at inflows versus outflows. Okay, so before we look at that, I just want to ask you a general question. Do all transactions have a cash flow effect? No. Why do you say no? Because you don't always pay the cash immediately. Exactly. There could be a timing difference. All right, so... It could be timing or it could be a non-cash item like depreciation, right? Okay. Okay. So on page 96, they've given you the financial statement analysis here. Okay. And there are some ratios as well looking at the financial statements. So when looking at tests and exams, you're not often going to be getting a complete set of financials. That's a bit too much of information in order to do the calculation. So they tend to focus mainly on what is inflow and what is outflow okay in terms of the actual effect so when i talk about depreciation inflow or outflow none correct okay it's a non-cash item when i talk about a sale of property plant and equipment inflow or outflow a sale of property and uh, that will be an inflow good okay see there's your accounting coming into it by helping you with the analysis great Okay, what about if I talk about the purchase of stationery? It's an outflow. Outflow. Profit on sale of an asset. Inflow. No. Profit on sale of profit on the sale of an asset. Is well, that a cash flow? No, but I mean, you wouldn't have had that that profit if you didn't sell the assets. And okay. by selling the asset, you had an inflow. Okay, see, that's good. Selling the asset is the inflow. The profit on the sale isn't an inflow or an outflow. It's a non-cash item. Okay. Okay. What about amortization of an asset? So an, an amortization, if you've done more accounts, um, you, you'll probably cover amortization or impairment. So an amortization or an impairment would be a writing down of the value of the asset. So if I'm writing down the value of the asset, inflow or outflow? None. Correct. What about a provision? So um, allowance for doubtful debts? None. 
correct. You see, all of those aren't cash flows. So they're not that important when it comes to a financial management decision-making point of view. Unless those accounts affect cash flow, we're not going to worry about them. Okay. Okay. One more. Bad debt or credit losses. Non-cash. Good. Nice. All right. So here's the work that we need to take away from the first study unit. The first study unit is going to be calculating OCF. Okay. Remember, OCF is something we spoke about in the long-term financial management module, which is at FIN 3701. In this module, they're applying the same theory, but in a slightly different context, okay, because we're looking at short-term financial management. So if I'm looking at operating cash flow, what am I looking at, day-to-day -day or long-term or short-term? Short-term. Short-term, okay, so cash will be generated from what? Sales. Correct. It could be a sale or it could be a service. So if I'm looking at a sale, I'll have this net profit after tax. Okay, remember net profit after tax, it might not always be given to you. If it isn't always given to you, then you have to do a calculation where you take the EBIT and you remove the tax. You take out the tax. Okay. Okay, EBIT times one minus the tax, I'm literally taking the tax off. Okay, so I've given you some examples here. I want you to calculate OCF using this equation and using okay. that information. What's the first step? Um. It's the 500,000 times the 1 minus 28%. Yes. And what does that give us? Oh, wait a bit, please. 500,000. Not sure how to do it on this calculator. Which one are you using? The HP? Yes. All right. You're going to need a normal scientific. It'll probably be easier, but I, I think you can use the brackets on the HP. It should work. I'm just looking for it. Sorry. Okay. 500,000. Second function bracket. 1 minus. 0.28 second function bracket. Okay. Is that th 360,000? Yes, okay, so now you've got that. And then what do I do? Um, then you take off the depreciation. Take off the depreciation. Add it back. Yes. Okay, so final answer is what? Um, it's going to be three, seven, three, eight, five. Correct. Okay, good. And that's the OCF for that particular company. Happy? Yeah. Great. Okay, you've got two here for you to try. So I want you to do these, okay? Get an answer and then we'll just check the answers afterwards. Okay. Okay. Right, good. So the answers that you would have gotten are as they are there. Okay. So 620,000, 255,000, those are the right answers. Okay. For both of those companies. Right. So when looking at that, if we're trying to make a decision, let's interpret that. What does OCF stand for? Operating cash flow. Good. So which company has more operating cash flow? The first or the second? 620,000. So the first one. Yeah, the first one. Okay, I should have given them different names. I've left it both as B. Okay, um, I think let me change that to C. Just so we've got a different company. Okay, so, so when I look at that, I can say that B is currently operating... Okay, a lot better 
than C in terms of its OCF. Right. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. And this was actually the same calculation we did in the uh, previous module, um, 3701, because in 3701 you also had to work out OCF, but the calculation there is a lot more advanced. And yeah. that's why I said this module is easier to do because you would have covered or you would have um, worked through the 3701 as well. So having both modules together actually really works out quite nicely. Okay. okay. How come Carl isn't doing both? Carl's not doing both. He's doing the second one next semester. He, he um, because of family and other commitments, he can't do too many modules each semester. Uh, yeah, so he's only chosen to do um, FIN 3701 this semester, and then he's going to do 3702 next semester. Uh, I can't. Okay, so I'll let him know that you can help him next semester if he needs help. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, okay, but anyway, let's continue here. We're almost done. We've got a few more slides. Okay, free cash flow. When you think of the word free, what do you what do you what comes to mind? There's no interest. Okay, besides interest, um, think about something else. Free cash flow. Free cash flow means available, right? It's it's not it's not paid for. It's available. Anyone can use it. Do you agree? Mm hmm. Okay, so when you look at free cash flow, companies need to analyze what's available to investors. And that's why we calculate something called free cash flow. Okay, so we don't mean free in the general context in terms of no one has to pay for it. That's not what we're referring to. We're referring okay. to the cash that's available to creditors and owners of the business. That's what we're looking at. What is free to be used rather than what's free in terms of no costs? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so when we look at free cash flow, we want to know after the company has operated and they've spent their money on all their expenditure and they've invested. Now we need to determine, well, what is actually left? Okay, is there anything left over? If there is something left over, do you think that's good or bad? Good. It is good. Right, so leading on to that working, I want to ask you how are companies financed? Through loans. What else? Um, loans? Investors. Loans, investors. Okay, so um, the correct terms would be? Date. And? Equity. Okay, those are the two. All right, so we're looking at free cash flow. Here's the formula for free cash flow. It's the same one that you've got in your textbook. This is how you do it. Okay, keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. If I'm looking at OCF, OCF is calculated from that equation. Do you see that? Do you see that? What do you mean? OCF. Yes. Okay. OCF is calculated using that equation, the OCF calculation. Here's it here. There's it. Okay. Okay. So we saw that earlier. OCF is OCF. This has a very specific calculation. There's it there. Got it? No. Okay, NNCI is the net non-current investment. And how do I get net non-current investment? It's the change in net non-current assets, okay, plus the depreciation, the investment. But where do I get that net non-current stuff? We'll look at it now when we look at this example. Okay, so... If I'm going to use this formula of free cash flow, I'm going to take the OCF, which is that other formula. Yes, the answer to the other formula. Oh, the answer. Okay. Yeah, you just take the answer. You take what you get here at the end. Okay. And you put that there. But we'll do one example just now. So just hold on a second. We'll, we'll go through the working. All right, and then the last one is this. NCAI, that stands for Net Current Asset Investment. 
And how do I get that? It's the change in current assets compared to the change in current liabilities. When I say change, we're looking at the difference from one year to another. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So here's the example. Here's net non-current assets. There's depreciation. There's current assets. There's current liabilities. And there's the OCF. Okay, so now we've got different workings that we need to do here. So OCF, OCF. Do you agree? I don't need to work that out, it's given. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, now we need to work out this. Okay, so NNCI is that, the net current change plus the depreciation. So where's my non-current? Um, there's my non-current. What's the change? 200. Oh, no, no, yeah, 200. Plus or minus? Plus. Why plus? Because it increases. Exactly. Okay, so be careful with the years. Make sure you identify the correct start and the end because it could be plus or minus, and if it's plus, it's a very different amount compared to the negative. Okay, and that'll throw out the answer if you get it wrong. Okay, so make sure you've got okay. the right years. Okay. Right, and then the last bit, oh, uh, I forgot to add the depreciation, plus depreciation, which is? Do you agree? No. Depreciation is 100, add 100. How do you know that? There's it. Oh, there, oh, okay, sorry, I'm blind. Okay. okay, plus 100. Let me just write this. Yes. Equals 300. Yes. Okay, uh, use the next slide rather than this one. Okay, because the answers are here. There's it. There's 300. Oh. Okay, so I'm just showing you what I'm thinking about when I'm reading the question. Okay, but write your answers here. Okay, just 100 minus 1000 plus 100 equals. Okay. Got it. Yes. Okay. Then we need to work out this NCAI. So let's go back. Change in current assets, change in current liabilities. So here's the two. What's the change? Plus or minus? Um, it's plus 100. And what's the change here? There it's plus 100. Plus 100. Okay, and then what does the rule say? The rule says it's 100 minus plus 100, right? Okay, so okay. if I show that, there's it there. Okay, 2,000 minus... That's basically what we discussed. Okay. And that gives me and zero. I OCF we spoke about, give it in the question. So the last thing is to get the F, or well, the FCF, the free cash flow. So free cash flow, we saw the equation here. It's actually here as well. I actually can keep the slide open. There's a thing. Okay. okay. So what amounts am I going to use? I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to get that. Yeah. Happy. Yes. Okay, so that's all it is. It's just taking a formula, knowing what the equations are, and then applying it to the question. Okay. Perfect. All right, this one's for you to do. So I've done one with you. There's the question for you to try. Okay, then I think that's the end of this week. Um, I'll just check. I think there's a few summary slides at the end, um, but we've covered the working. Okay. Right, so take your time, um, complete this one, and then we'll continue once you've got an answer. I want an answer for this, FCF. You've got 
a blank page there with some space for you to fill in the answer. So use that template and put the right amounts where they need to go and get FCF for me, okay? Okay. All right, so take a few minutes, let me know when you're done, and we'll continue. Okay, I see it for the NNCI, 1,500 minus 1,900, plus the 300 is 700. Plus or minus? Plus. Good. Okay. And then for the NCAI, I said the 2,200 minus the 2,800. So 600 minus 300. So it's a positive... No. Did you get positive yeah. 100? Uh, sorry, I, I subtracted it. Oh, these two? Yes. Okay, because um, remember, 600 minus 900 is minus 300. Yes. And minus 300 times a minus is a plus 300. Okay. Minus and a minus so, is a plus. Okay, so then it's 900. Okay, so then I'll say the 2,000 minus... 700 minus 900. Is that right? 400 is the answer, yes. 2000 minus 700 minus 900 equals 400. Good. Okay, great. So just be careful with the signs. Okay. Pluses and minuses. Be careful with those. Okay. Happy? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, and then this is the last slide. Um, just a note about financial planning. We spoke about it right at the beginning. Remember, we're looking at the whole process of taking action. Okay, so guiding, coordinating, and controlling. It's all of it. Okay, so the financial planning process needs to achieve objectives. Okay, we need to achieve those goals. Right, and companies will have different goals. They'll have long-term goals and they'll have short-term goals. Long-term goals are looking at a period of five years or longer. Short-term would be looking at anywhere between one, two, maybe even three or four years, depending on um, what the company's time frame is. But you're breaking it up into shorter terms. So you're looking at weekly, you're looking at monthly, you're looking at daily, you're looking at operations. Okay, so what can we do day-to-day -day in terms of operations to improve and to achieve the long-term goal. Okay, because remember, your long-term and your short-term goal should be aligned. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so what is your long-term goal? Well, what you want to do in five years' time. Okay, so give me an example. Give me something you want to do in five years' time. Um... I haven't even thought of that yet. <laughs> okay, well, just think of something. You can make it up, it doesn't matter, but just give me an example. Okay, buy a new car. Okay, so long-term goal, five years from now you want to buy a new car. So what should you be doing short-term to achieve that long-term goal? Well, obviously work towards a salary that can afford to buy a new car. Okay, there we go. So you need to be doing, doing monthly or daily, um, let's say, tasks to achieve a longer term goal. Okay, so it might be something like um, maybe in five years' time, because think about it, five years is five times 12, which is 60 months. Okay, the car that you want to buy, how much is it going to cost? 300,000. Okay, so if I'm looking at that as being the long-term five-year goal, then 300k is what I'm going to need in five years. If I've got yeah. 60 months to do so, then what could I do each month? Well, 300,000 divided by 60 hmm. is 5,000 rand a month. So if you had to put 5,000 rand a month away, You'd be able to buy that brand new car in five years cash 
Yeah. Okay. Obviously, if you're investing five thousand per month and you're earning interest, you'll probably be able mm. to buy a four hundred thousand rand car. Okay. Okay. But I'm just trying to show the practicality of financial planning. Okay. So financial planning is the actual process. It's guiding, coordinating, and controlling. It's having the right steps in place to achieve the goals we want. Okay. Okay. So moving in that direction. Yes. Okay, so important for this module, are we focusing on long term or short term? Short term. Good. Okay, so this module is focusing on that, but we still need scope. So even though, okay, we're going to be looking, okay, at the short term, right, but the long term is what we're trying to achieve. Okay, so. If we're, if we're going short term, we need to still keep on, on track to get to the long term goal. And that's why companies need to manage their cash flow and they need to have budgets. Because um, having cash flow statements and having budgets and having the plans in place on a day by day basis, even a schedule, we can even break it down further. Schedule. Okay, so what must we do each day or every week or every month in order to get that final, final objective or strategy for the business? Okay, and that's pretty much what the course is going to focus on. It's very much focused on short-term, but short-term actions, things that we can do today that will affect long-term um, reward or goal. Okay, make sense? Yes. Okay.